back in October 2020, um, I put together a small team um, and we headed up to Kalgoorlie with the aim of running back to Mundaring Weir, which was just shy of 600 kilometres along the Golden Pipeline Heritage Trail. The pipeline obviously being engineered and, uh, and built by C.Y. O'Connor uh, to aid the gold rush, um, to assist with getting water up to Kalgoorlie. But um, the main aim of our run was actually for Parkinson's WA. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease a few years back and he's been bat- battling it bravely ever since. So um, I thought, well, you know, what, we, what can we do to help? And um, obviously uh, all being ultra runners, um, we put our heads together and, uh, and thought this would be a great idea to raise some money and awareness. Um, we ended up raising just short of $15,000 over the nine days. Um, and, you know, in acknowledgement of the great efforts by the team, um, we were awarded the Jeff Pride Fundraising Award, which was terrific. But look, I'd just like to say a huge shout out, a big thank you um, and forever grateful to, to my team, which included Simon Polly, Rebecca and Chris Kirkwood, Felix, otherwise known as uh, Andrew Polly, and my beautiful wife, Sam. Um, without you guys, uh, this, this couldn't and wouldn't have happened. So, uh, f- you know, um, yeah, huge. Uh, words, words really can't express, you know, what it meant uh, to me and, and to my dad and family. So a uh, huge thank you. But look, uh, strap yourself in, guys. If you've got 20 minutes to spare, uh, yeah, I'd encourage you to have a, a look at the video and um, share some of the experience with us. So the $20 million question, would I do this again? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I think that I would like to do it again, but I wouldn't like to run the same, the same um, journey again because I think part of the, the, the journey has been the adventure not knowing what was going to come next and I think if I was to run from Kalgoorlie to Perth again I would know what was coming and it would take a, a, a bit of the excitement and adventure away. I'd definitely like to do more events like this I suppose. Um, it's, it's been great and I think to do it for a cause has made it easier. Easier to get out of bed, it's easier to take another step, it's easier to go back out there again, it's easier to have you know to, to, to tie your shoes up again um, because we're we're running for someone else apart from ourselves and I think that's so the short answer I suppose is yes um, under certain circumstances <laughs> a nice section of pipe looking good looking smooth amazing running watch out for that curve in the pipe there Would I do this all again if given the opportunity? Yes, yeah. Um, just for the variety of it though, I'd probably prefer to do some other track. You know, I've had a fair bit of the pipe, uh, <laughs> the, the pipe, you know, uh, you know. Perhaps had a bit of separation anxiety yesterday when Simon and I ran through Meriden and we lost the pipe for a couple of kilometres because it ducked underground and, and uh, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do you know, some sort of a long trek, you know, whether it's the Bibbulmun or the Mundabidi or uh, something, the Lara Pinta Trail in the middle of Australia from, you know, through the West McDonald Range and stuff. That's exciting. I'd like to do something like that. Yeah. Would I do something like this again? Definitely. Recommend it. Good learning experience. Leg two, day three. Looking really strong, looking good. And not telling me.
like a carousel. I did a roll again. Well, yes, like I've been wanting to do this is a thing that I keep thinking of doing in particular ways and forms. I've thought of running to Mount Magnet because my auntie lives there and just going town to town and like buying what I need and keep going. Uh, I've wanted to do Hunt's Track from York to Kalgoorlie. There's that, and I, I want to run, f do the run. F following the old York Road, the like the original York Road from Guildford to York. So yeah, they, it's the kind of thing that tie in with history and long challenges is like deeply interesting to me. So yeah, that, that's almost certainly I want to do this kind of crap again. <laughs> Would I do it again? Um, not this run. <laughs> um, that pipe. <laughs> well, I love the pipe. I have um, developed a strange relationship with this pipe. Um, affectionately, we call it Pete. Um, but it's, and I, I get quite sad when it disappears and goes underground. Um, and I think guys understand how I am with the pipe now. Um, but would I do this particular run? Not a chance in the world. Um, it's it's been amazing, but I would definitely do this sort of thing again. If uh, Pete said, "Look, I want to do another charity run. I want to do this," said we're going to run somewhere else. I would do it in a flash. Um, taking the onus of yourself, so it's not your own personal journey. It's not for you. Um, takes so much pressure off yourself to actually do it, and you just. You know, that mental side of it where you think it's not, it's about you, it's an event, you're trying to win it or you're trying to do your own personal goal, you're doing it for someone else, you're doing it for a good cause. So it, it makes it a lot easier, I think, to just get up and do it. Um, and it's, if you have the right people doing it with you and have a great crew and a great team, it becomes an amazing journey. I mean, I think it's something that, that we're all gonna just remember and cherish for a long time. It, it's been an amazing trip. And yeah, yeah, definitely do it again. If, but not this. No, <laughs> I don't even want to drive back to Kalgoorlie <laughs> ever. <laughs>
I had the opportunity. I had a little bit of a giggle about this one. Pete had asked me during the journey, <laughs> would you do all this again? And initially I said, no. Um, yeah, but obviously I'd had time to sort of sit and reflect. Um, you know, it, it's been hard. Um, yeah, I've challenged myself in ways, like I said before, I've just, yeah, things I haven't been able to or even think I could do, I've been able to, to do it. Um, if I were to do this again, um, I said to people, you know, I'd, I'd like a little bit more input. I myself would have liked to have done a bit more running um, due to my knee, knee injury at the moment that's been um, difficult for me, um, you know, because I'm wanting to run but not being able to um, has been, you know, challenging for myself um, as well. So yeah, I'd love to do it again um, for myself to maybe run a little bit more and then peak crew for me, that'd be great. Chris has just spotted a, an emu in its chick. He's off chasing it with the GoPro. See if we can get a bit of footage. Uh, right hand side. Go right. Can you see it's on? Yeah, it's on the chick. Yeah, so hopefully uh, they're off and racing. Go on, keep up. Good boys! Woo!
Hey, you're videoing me, I'm videoing you. No, you're videoing them. Someone's being videoed. You have to leapfrog me. Good running guys, look at you go! Woo! But we didn't want to go on the road. Woo! Woo! So we just, the gate was open. The next gate's not open. For sure. But um, we'll deal with that when we get up. No. How did the journey challenge me? Um, well, I think quite simply, uh, it probably challenged me emotionally more so than it did uh, physically, which might sound a little bit weird considering, um, you know, um, the injury that um, that had occurred over the journey. Um, I suppose just putting it into a little bit of a nutshell and into some context, um, I was always going to find the, the distance and backing up day on day uh, extremely challenging because my preparation wasn't what it needed to be uh, because of my body. But um, I was quite prepared to push through the challenges and, and knew the potential risks. So I've been dealing with sort of an ailing body for a, for a number of years. So I don't believe that was my biggest challenge. Uh, what I found most challenging was on day four as we are approaching Southern Cross after our lunch break when I got up with Simon and Beck um, to push on, I think it's that extra 30 kilometres that was required that day. I got probably no more than 500 metres down, down the track and, and quite simply could not put my foot down uh, another step um, without um, you know, immense sharp pain through my foot and, uh, and up my leg. Um, my biggest challenge was having those conversations with um, with Beck and Simon. I, yeah, I didn't need to say too much. I, I called out. They were a little bit ahead at that stage already, even after 500 metres. And um, they could quite simply see by the look on my face that um, you know the news I was going to deliver wasn't wasn't good news. So um, at that stage, I, I hadn't really thought that it was the end of my run. Um, at that stage, I was thinking, oh, I've got to go back, I've got to get some treatment. Hopefully, this can be fixed. Um, worst case scenario, it might need some ice, I might need to sit out for a while, and I may miss a leg and rejoin the guys tomorrow. All that was going through my head um, as I struggled to get the words out. Um, I walked back to, to Sam and Chris where they were sort of packing up, getting ready to move on to the next aid station. And yet again, uh, I sort of hobbled up. Sam came towards me. I struggled, struggled to get any words out. And uh, as I did get the words out, I just burst out into tears. It just all came out. It's the accumulation, I suppose, of all, all the pain and all the emotion. Um, I think I, I had an understanding then. Um, that as much as I, I, I wanted to push on, uh, it just wasn't going to be physically possible. Um, Sam just hugged me, um, and poor old Chris, I'm not too sure if he knew where to look at that stage, seeing a grown man approaching 50 burst into tears. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was just overwhelming. Um, from that point, um, you know, it took me a while, it took me the rest of the day to consider what I needed to do. Sam um, was, was enormous support. She said, look, I needed to go straight to hospital. I somehow managed to convince her that let's have a, a wait and see. I didn't really want to go to hospital because I knew if I went to hospital, then I'd probably be faced with uh, news that I didn't want to hear. So, um, but we did, we got to hospital the next morning and, and um, they, they determined that um, I had stress fractures in my foot which had caused burst blood vessels beneath my foot and an infection, which hence why my foot had, had swollen up like a balloon. Um, the doctor stated that it was uh, most likely due to me overcompensating. Um, so it was my right foot that I injured, but I've got a dodgy left hip. So probably adapting my running gait. 
was probably partially to blame for it, uh, along with not, not simply being prepared, and not having the, the kilometres um, in the legs, um, you know, in, in the training blocks that were required. But, you know, my stubborn nature um, refused to, to, um, to use those as obstacles. And, um, yeah, that's just me, I suppose. But, um, yeah. See you at Baker's Hill. Yes, there they go.